How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? And welcome to a brand new episode of Strictly Nintendo, where we're going to check out Armillo, an indie game brought to the eShop by Fuzzy Wuzzy Games, in which you assume the role of Armillo, a space armadillo, who upon arriving home from intergalactic vacation, discovers his home planet is being overrun by an evil group of alien robots called the Dark Bots. So Armillo sets out to stop the Dark Bots and save his home planet, a journey which takes him to multiple planets across five solar systems. And there might just be something more at stake here. Now, the story is goofy. And I like that. Goofy can be fun. It's also simple. And that plays into what I'm going to call an underlying architecture to the game, in which there's really nothing overly sophisticated about the game, but for the most part, it's all well done. Case in point, the graphics. We're not talking super high polygon counts here. You can see in some of the curves of the rails in the environment, uh, spherical objects and the domes on the alien spacecrafts, they're kind of blocky. There's nothing smooth and, and fluid there. And we're not talking really detailed textures either. But everything has a consistent cartoony feel to it. And it's well done. One of the things that I like the most about the graphics are the colors. They really have a rich color palette here that they chose, and they achieved a nice, deep, dark, pure HD black, which really lends to a nice contrast and helps that color palette really pop. And you can tell this not just in the basic models, but in the lighted effects, such as the blue glowing orbs that you collect as currency, as well in the levels where you have lava. That contrast and that lighting glow it just It's really pleasing whether you're looking at it on a TV or on the gamepad screen. And honestly, I played this game mostly on the gamepad, and it made me appreciate the gamepad's display. So, really nicely done there. The audio is also well done. You know, again, simple, but clean, detailed, uh, well-balanced. Nothing's hyped up or muddy or harsh or anything like that. And, you know, they have these funny little noises to uh, represent the characters talking and this kind of poppy EDM techno kind of music going on in the background that just really lends itself to play off the overall energy of the game. So that was well done. Now the controls, this is where I feel that they could have done a little bit better. Now the controls aren't bad. You know, they don't detract from the overall experience of the game, but it's kind of a trade-off. The mechanics of the game are very simple. Basically, you roll around, you have a little speed roll where you can run into objects and knock them over, or, you know, try and elude an enemy's attack. You jump, and then every once in a while you have a little cannon on your back where you shoot enemies. Now, given how simplistic the overall mechanics are, it's that trade-off. It's like, if it's going to be that simple in the mechanics, I feel like they could have taken a little bit more time to really tighten the controls just that little extra bit to kind of sweeten things. I will give them credit on using the internal gyroscopic motion controls of the gamepad so you can tilt it to move Armillo through the environments. That's a nice challenge that you should definitely check out. Really well done. Nice call there. And when you do have the cannon on the back of your character and you're sitting there shooting the enemies, you can aim that cannon with the right analog stick. And that's a good choice there. I like those design elements. So again, I do believe that they could have tightened up the controls a little bit better, but overall, not bad. Now, the game has a decent amount of content to it. You know, you have plenty of main levels to go through, which are all 3D environments. They look good. They change up the environment so, you know, it feels fresh. And then you have bonus levels where you have a side-scrolling 2D environment that really just kind of freshens up the overall game. And you're basically racing against the clock to traverse obstacles and collect all the little blue orbs that you use as currency. And you are going to want to collect as many as possible because you're going to use those at the shop to get things such as extra lives and more health. And well, you're going to need that because the game gets harder as you progress through it. So it's nice to have that build up of a challenge in the game. There's also a rating system where at the end of every level, your overall performance is assessed and depending on your score, you can be rewarded a bronze, silver, or gold medal, so there is some replay value there in trying to go back and beat your high scores. Now, for me personally, 
I found Armillo to be quite a casual game. It wasn't something I wanted to invest hours on end with, but if I had a half an hour, you know, before I had to go to sleep or go to work or go out to dinner or something like that, you know, I'd play a level or two here and there and be satisfied. And I think it was the underlying elements of pinball, because I'm a huge fan of pinball, you know, whether we're talking about the real game or the video game pinball, uh, I think it was those elements that really did attract me to the game. And, you know, when you really strip Armillo down to its core, it's pretty much Sonic the Hedgehog meets pinball. Um, and there's nothing wrong with a good casual game, you know? I mean, if you don't have a whole lot of time to invest in a game, you know, because you're busy and you just want to get some gaming in, or if you're in between major titles, a good casual game can be a lot of fun to have around. So if you are into games like Super Monkey Ball, Sonic the Hedgehog, Pinball, you know, and you don't mind something that's potentially pretty casual, I do think that you'd enjoy it, and I do recommend checking it out. You know, it's something to keep your eye on. And above all else, the one thing I can more than anything take from Armillo is that all the individuals over at Fuzzy Wuzzy Games are clearly very talented. You know, they made some really good design choices here, and overall, like I said, everything was well done, even for as simplistic as it is. It's, it's just solid. And I think they can only get better as a team. So I do hope that they continue to bring games to Nintendo consoles. And I do look forward to seeing what they might offer in the future. And that will do it for this episode of Strictly Nintendo. Don't forget to leave a like, rate, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope to see you in the next episode. Take care.